Almost every elemental shaman is running the Farseer fire build. And trust me, I understand. It's very fun to play. Instant cast lava bursts flying out of your face in 10 million directions is really cool. And it's good. It's a great build for spread pressure. But it doesn't have that scary single target burst that a lot of people are looking for. And I think I have managed to stumble upon a build that many people would write off because it's got some things from the past that many people just consider bad. Um, and I think a lot of people have just written off some of these talents as bad without giving them a proper shot in this expansion, in the context of this expansion. Uh, so today we're going to go over my one-shot meme build. Is it legit or is this just corny and easily mitigated? I think there's some serious potential here because you have the insane one-shot potential that I'm getting ready to show you, as well as maintaining a large percentage of that AoE spread pressure with your flame shocks. Um, so I think you do get the best of both worlds. Not quite as good of AoE pressure as the, the meatball build, but it's pretty close. So here's a quick preview of what you can expect. So how am I doing this much damage? Well, let's break it down. Now, I do want to preface this by saying this is a very general list. You're not going to be able to pull this off most of the time because, you know, the enemies are going to be CCing you, line of sighting you, your teammates are going to be doing things. It might not be worth popping bloodlust if the fight's almost won. There's a million different variables that can happen when you're fighting other players. But this is going to give you a general idea of how I'm doing it. And the number one most important thing is that if you have Stormkeeper up, you need to be operating at high Maelstrom, meaning that you don't want to be blowing Earthshock the second you get enough Maelstrom to, to do it. I know it's a hard habit to break. I like it as much as you guys do, but to pull this combo off, you just need to be operating your day-to-day -day Elemental Shaman activities at higher Maelstrom. If you do that, the rest of these things will fall in order. I know it looks very intimidating looking, looking at this 12 you know, 12 item list of things that need to line up for you to pull this off. I promise you the, the hardest thing is just operating at high maelstrom. When you're at high maelstrom and you spend that earth shock to not cap out on maelstrom, you obviously don't want to sit at cap, you know, you want to get as high as you can, you know, earth shock and not waste anything, right? But eventually you're going to do that and you're going to proc a tempest. Look, you're already on stage three. Once you have that tempest, then you stormkeeper. And when you Stormkeeper, you already have the Surge of Power from when you spent the Earth Shock. So you've got Stormkeeper going, a Tempest in your pocket, and you've got Surge of Power. Boom, call out the Tempest. Then you call out the Lightning Bolt, which consumes the Surge of Power. Then you Earth Shock with your pulled up ma Maelstrom. Uh, so you, you have enough Maelstrom already to do another Earth Shock because you're at high Maelstrom to start with. Then you Lightning Bolt again, which is instant because of the Stormkeeper buff, another instant one. That will consume the Surge of Power. Then you spec into Nature Swiftness because you're intelligent. Then you can do a Nature Swiftness Lightning Bolt. And if you hit multiple targets, with, then you have Chain Lightning procs. We'll get to that in the Talents section. And then if all of that lines up, you have enough Maelstrom for another Earth Shock. And you do that, you get another surge of power, and you cast another lightning bolt. Now, nobody makes it to stage 12. I, I don't know of anybody that's made it to stage 12 unless they're a healer healing themselves and you don't have any help killing them. Uh, but the general idea is you are trying to severely abuse lightning overloads through Stormkeeper and through surge of power. And when you line up all these things and you come into the the combo already pre-charged with high maelstrom with a surge of power on deck and a tempest in your pocket. You've got all these things in your pocket before you even start. It's disgusting. 
and the fact that there is no setup on the target you want to put this on makes it incredible. This is not like a rogue situation where, you know, oh, it's the cheap shot, the kidney shot, the bomb. You know, it's not like this very preambled thing. It's, you can build all this stuff up in the middle of the fight and some guy just rezzes out of the graveyard and you just blow him the fuck up. Like, that is something you can do. There's no warning. There's just raw damage out of nowhere. It's crazy. Now let's talk about what this build's good at and what it's bad at. Now, first of all, I created this build specifically for Battleground Blitz. It could work in Solo Shuffle because Solo Shuffle is a little bit less organized, a little bit more chaotic, and Stormkeeper is going to do better in that kind of environment. But in traditional 3v3, this build will not work because teams are coordinated when it comes to defensive play. When a good team sees that Stormkeeper come out, they're just going to pull back as an entire team and space out that damage to where it's much more manageable. And there's no penalty for doing that in traditional 3v3 because there's not an objective. The objective is TDM. You don't really lose anything for pulling back to a pillar and just spacing that out and playing safe during Stormkeeper. But that is not the case for BG Blitz. If you pull back and play defensive in BG Blitz, you lose the objective. And also in Battleground Blitz, it's more chaotic, not as organized, which is an environment where Stormkeeper is going to thrive. Um, just because, first of all, it's BG Blitz. It's not a coordinated team going into this. It's a battleground, so there's a lot more going on. There's more players. There's more targets that you can choose from, more people to be out of position, more juicy targets to blow up, and more targets for spread pressure. Um, number two, huge thing for this, the difference between battlegrounds and arenas is that line of sight is much less available in battlegrounds all of the line of sight for the most part in battlegrounds is pretty far away from the objective you can't be hugging a pillar and winning the game at the same time if you want to go for that objective you're gonna sort of have to put yourself in a vulnerable position and uh potentially eat those storm keepers now let's talk about all of the good things this build has Number one, and the most obvious thing, is that the kill windows are absolutely terrifying. And not only are they terrifying, there's very little indication of when they're coming. Outside of a one-second Stormkeeper cast that's very easy to miss in the chaos of a Battleground Blitz, um, it, it's very hard to see it coming. It's not heavily telegraphed in a way that other you know, one-shot sequences are. Um, and even if you do see the Stormkeeper cast, let's say you're in a battleground, you see the Stormkeeper come out. Even then, in the chaos of the fight, there's no way for you to know who that damage is going to go off on. Because it doesn't require a setup on the target. All of your prerequisite things to do crazy damage are buffs that you give yourself. Meaning that I can be building up my crazy combo on targets A, B, and C, and then do a complete 180 and t blow up target D with all of the resources I built up on previous targets. And I think that's a very unique thing that Elemental can do that, that nobody else can do in the same way that I've seen thus far. Another great thing about this kill window is that almost all of my damage is instant cast or extremely quickly casted spells. Also, you can just use things like Spirit Walker's Grace with the Aura Mastery and just be flat out immune to interrupts and silences. Meaning that pretty much if you get off that Stormkeeper, the damage is coming. Now they can stun you and they can hit you with other sorts of CC, but the damage is coming. There is no real stopping it. You can space it out, but you can't really stop it because a large majority of it is going to be instant cast. Now, if you space that damage out, it's much more healable, it's much easier to deal with, but it's still going to happen. This is not a situation where it's like a Chaos Bolt, where you interrupt a Chaos Bolt, and it's a long cast, and they just lose out on the damage. You know, if you hit me with a, you know, a cheap shot in the middle of my burst combo, yeah, you're just delaying it for, you know, two or three seconds, but it's still coming out, and it's all still going to be instant cast, because these buffs that give you all of these instant cast procs last a long time. They're not dispellable. Like, the damage is coming. And the final and probably most important thing is that the build still does pretty good sustain damage outside of these kill windows. You still retain a lot of your AoE spread pressure through Flame Shock 
and your fire elemental, which improves your flame shock. If you just put up flame shocks on everybody and you're casting some lightning bolts and lava bursts here and there, like you're going to be pumping. Even if you have none of your cooldowns up, you're still going to be doing pretty well. And you also have pretty good team utility with things like Totem of Wrath, Grounding Totem. And something people sleep on is Healing Stream Totem does a ton of healing even if you aren't Resto. The main theme of this build is two things. Crazy kill windows every 60 seconds with your Bloodlust and your Stormkeeper. You do this by taking advantage of crazy damage multipliers and things that give you elemental overloads. And number two... You've got pretty decent spread pressure with your flame shocks. You've got to be really good about keeping those flame shocks up on anything that moves, or even the things that don't move. If you can flame shock it, you should, because that's going to really help your team. And while that damage may not be scary in terms of a heal ability factor, it's not like a terrifying, like healers aren't having nightmares about healing flame shock damage. It's still something they have to heal. And if you're just softening everybody up for, you know, your arms warriors and the other people on your team, that's going to help you a ton. And then every 60 seconds, it's, it's playmaker time. Let's go, boys. Now let's talk about the talents. Now, first thing you want to keep in mind is that a lot of these talents, especially when it comes to the class tree, are very situational. It depends on the role you're playing. If you want hex, get hex, things like that. But I'm mainly going to go over the more mandatory things and explain why I picked the things I picked. So let's start off with Stormbringer. Obviously, this is a lightning bolt themed build all about doing big lightning bolt damage. Stormbringer is the obvious choice here. Um, the only talent to really talk about of note here is this one. And I actually went with Arc Discharge over Stormswell. Now, most PvPers probably just immediately pick Stormswell because most PvP is single target and this is the easiest thing to take advantage of. But... Arc Discharge is actually a lot better than people are giving it credit for. Um, in Battlegrounds, it is very likely that your Tempest is going to strike more than one target. Uh, keep in mind, in a Battleground, you're fighting over objectives. People are naturally going to be closer together. There's more players in a Battleground. And also, your, our, your Tempest is a deceptively large range. It's much larger of a range than you think. And your Tempest doesn't need to hit two players just two targets and in battlegrounds with dk pets warlock pets druid pets hunter pets there's a million different fucking things all over the battlefield now that that tempest can hit and proc those two chain lightnings off of now the chain lightning damage being increased by 40 percent that is going to make your chain lightning damage in a purely single target context if it's just hitting one player it's not bad um, it's not as good as a lightning bolt most of the time, but keep in mind it's instant cast. And when you're doing this, you're likely going to be lusted. So these globals, you know, you're, you're doing a global every 700 milliseconds or something. Um, you you know, it's, it's basically free, right? And you might be saying, ah, that's, that's not that great though. But what a lot of people don't think about when it comes to arc discharge is lightning rod, lightning rod, which even if you don't spec into it right here, which you should, in my opinion, even if you, don't, if you don't spec into it there, you get Lightning Rod for free on your Tempest, which is going to proc this in the first place. And what that Lightning Rod is going to do is it's going to redirect 20% of all of that Chain Lightning damage back to your primary target. Now, now the math is starting to look really, really good on Arc Discharge, right? Because you're doing all of that damage. It's instant cast, doing 40% more than 40% of, you know, or 20% of that empowered damage is getting redirected back to the target you want to hit in the first place, it gets scary very, very quickly. So I would not sleep on Arc Discharge. You're going to get a lot of value from this and the single target threat of your Chain Lightnings, especially when they're empowered and they're instant, with Lightning Rod, it can get really crazy. And you'll see that in the gameplay section. Now let's get into the elemental tree. Most of this stuff is fairly self-explanatory, but let's go over the high points here and start off with Surge of Power. Surge of Power is 100% mandatory. You have to take this talent for this playstyle. The entire playstyle of this build hinges on taking advantage of Surge of Power, Lightning Bolt, Elemental Overloads. That is the name of the game. When you combine Surge of Power with Stormkeeper, with your Mastery, with your Empowered Lightning Bolts, that is what's doing the crazy damage. And when you load all that stuff up and just fire it at some poor bastard, 
That's how he gets blown the hell up. So you have to get Surge of Power. You have to get good about using your Surge, surge of Power on Lightning Bolt exclusively. Uh, that's the real skill check of this build is, is just being disciplined and not using your, you know, Earth Shocks on random shit or your Surge of Powers on random shit. Um, so that's that's probably the hardest part of learning this build. Next up, Swirling Maelstrom. Uh, this is going to increase your Maelstrom by 50. This is very good for building up that kill window. An extra 50 Maelstrom is going to mean that you can have an extra Earth Shock in your pocket. It's going to give you a little bit more wiggle room on your Maelstrom to where when you're operating at higher Maelstrom levels, you're less likely to waste it. Um, the main thing, though, is being able to have that extra Earth Shock in your pocket for when you start your kill window. Uh, that's going to be great. Obviously, the damage Earth Shock does is good, but having an extra Earth Shock before you even start for another surge of power, that's the real thats the real kicker, is being able to do that. Now on to one of the more counterintuitive picks, and I went with a Fire Elemental over a Storm Elemental. Now, a lot of you guys are going to say, why not go Storm Elemental? That'll just make your kill windows even crazier because you'd be getting all that haste from the Lightning Spam, right? And it would make your kill windows even crazier. But the fire elemental is so valuable and so useful every other time that, in my opinion, it's silly not to go with the fire elemental. You need to be useful to your team outside of once every 60 seconds. And I love the kill window just as much as you guys do. It's fun, but I don't think the storm elemental will disproportionately help you in that window more than the fire elemental helps you out all the time. And you need to be doing damage outside of once every 60 seconds and the fire elemental uh, lets you do crazy spread pressure even if you are you know no cooldowns no maelstrom getting trained by two melee if you're just putting flame shock on everything with a fire elemental down you're doing pretty good damage it's not scary damage but it's damage that will enable your teammates to you know potentially open up kill windows for themselves right so the fire elemental with that empowered flame shock that's lasting 100% longer and doing damage 33% faster is crazy, especially when you uh, consider that that 33% faster damage synergizes with things like searing flames. So you're going to be generating more maelstrom because it's ticking faster and you're going to be getting your elemental you know, cooldown back faster because it's ticking faster therefore it's critting more and it's refreshing the cooldown on that elemental and when you have all these things working together and you are multi-dotting with your uh flame shock on everything there are many times in pvp where your uh big boy the big fire elemental actually has one more than 100 percent uptime meaning that the big boy is out and it's off cooldown and it's still out that that happens a lot more than you would think um, which will bring us to uh, another sort of controversial talent, which is Echo of the Elements. Um, this is not a sexy talent. The little baby fire elemental is not the most inspiring thing damage-wise. But what a lot of people don't know about the baby elemental is that it also still gives you the empowered flame shocks. And it's going to give you more time to be putting out in empowered flame shocks. It also counts as a, an elemental for primor primordial bond. You don't need to have the big boy to get the benefits. The little guy will give you all the flame shock benefits as well as when the little guy enters the battlefield, when this guy gets despawned, this guy comes crashing in and, and does crazy damage just like the big boy does. And that uh, meteor, whatever that ability is called, when he enters the battlefield can hit deceptively hard and it's random and it's just another random chaotic crazy thing this build brings. Uh, but obviously the main thing is just more empowered flame shock uptime. And um, also, if you're really pumping and you summon a new fire elemental, you can have both of these out at the same time. You can have the little guy and the big guy out on the battlefield at the same time, which is crazy. So that's uh, a lot better than you would think it would be, in my opinion. Next up, we have Liquid Magma Totem, which in my opinion is the GOAT. Being able to have five flame shocks at the start of a team fight is crazy. Run up to a base, Liquid Magma Totem three people, Flame Shock the other guy, Primordial Wave the other guy, and you've started the team fight off with five Flame Shocks, and you haven't even casted a real spell yet, and you've got crazy spread pressure already going. Um, that it's it's a great tool, but even just using Liquid Magma Totem as purely another Flame Shock button is not a bad use for it. It's got a 24 second cooldown. That's relatively low. If I go to a base and there's three people that are relatively spread out. 
I will absolutely flame shock one of them, primordial wave the other one, and then liquid magma totem, the other singular player. This spell is useful even in a purely single target context when your other methods of flame shocking are down. And obviously it's good when you get a triple flame shock, duh. And the damage it does um, within nine yards, it's not great, but surprisingly you get some good value out of this, especially when it comes to um, using this as a way to flame shock a healer that's standing off to the side. There's a lot of times where there would just be a holy pally, just spam casting and you just drop a liquid magma totem at his feet and he'll fucking stand in that thing and take all that damage. It's not a lot of damage, but it's just another just another way to do damage. So uh, all this stuff really works together when you know when you have the flame elemental and the liquid magma totem and it's synergizing with skybreakers and it's synergizing with um, searing flames. Like when all this stuff works together, it's it's kind of beautiful. And it's also synergizing with volcanic surge, which we'll get into in a minute. Now on to lightning rod, which is a talent that I didn't really understand at first because when you when you read this talent, you assume oh this is kind of a mythic plus you know trash DPS talent, right? But when I actually tested it, Lightning Rod will improve your exclusively single target damage. Go to a target dummy right now, a singular target dummy with Lightning Rod spec and cast Lightning Bolts. Lightning Rod will proc on just that. So this will improve exclusively your single target lightning damage, which I think a lot of people didn't know. Uh, I didn't know that. But also what Lightning Rod will do is it will make your chain lightnings, especially in an arc discharge with arc discharge, very, very scary. When, when all of that trash damage gets redirected to your primary target, it's very good. And also, it's just one of those talents that you're going to get a lot of value out of long term. In a battleground, you know, your, your primary kill target, the Earth Shock, you know, he might jump out of line of sight, might get life gripped, whatever. So there's going to be a lot of situations where that Lightning Rod damage, it's just going to add up. So I think Lightning Rod is an easy pick. It's going to make Arc Discharge go from something that's pretty good to something that's like terrifying, depending on the context. You know, those maxed out Arc Discharges are really, really scary uh, if your primary target's got Lightning Rod on it. it. It adds up faster than you'd think. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, my most controversial talent choice, and that is Volcanic Surge. Now, with Volcanic Surge, you lose the ability to proc Instant Cast Lava Burst. Now, I get it. I love meatballs just as much as the, ne as the next guy. I love seeing 10,000 meatballs fly out of my character's face. It's great. But, have you tried it? Have you tried this talent in the actual expansion? Not the pre-patch. Have you tried it with all of the current variables that we've talked about? Um... I think a lot of people tried this talent in the pre-patch or in previous, you know, iterations of the game without the Stormbringer build, without, you know, all the Surge of Power Madness we're doing, and they haven't tried it since. This talent is not just increasing the value of Lightning Bolt. It's increasing the value of your Lightning Rod, of your Stormkeeper, of your Surge of Power, because when Lightning Bolt does more damage, all of these other things also do more damage. So that's something that I don't think people have tested in the current expansion with all of the variables because I could see testing this pre-patch when you don't have Stormbringer and being like, that's incredibly underwhelming. But when you have all of the multipliers and you're taking advantage of everything, I think the math changes. And I would, um, you know, there's a lot of haters when it comes to this particular talent. And I just feel like they haven't tried it in the actual game. Uh, try it with everything and see if you think a little differently. Um, so 30% more lightning bolt damage really puts those kill windows over the top as well as having uh, up to 50% faster uh, chain landing cast time. That's not bad either, um, but I get it. You know, I love instant cast meatballs as much as the next guy, but have you tried it? Have you tried it? And honestly, Volcanic Surge is what puts this build over the top when it comes to the burst damage. I mean, it's, it's, it's insane when you are getting 30% more lightning bolt damage in addition to all of the overloads being empowered by 30%. It's huge. Now onto the gameplay section of the video. This is gonna show off how a kill window can open up in the middle of a losing team fight. So they've got more people in mid than us. We're losing this fight. I'm just trying my best to keep flame shocks and everybody, but they have more people in mid and we're kind of just getting pushed back. But I am going to be fishing for one of these kill windows and on my next Earth Shock, I'm going to proc my Tempest. And that's when it's go time. So here we go. It's go time. Out comes the Stormkeeper. Look at this Hunter just get absolutely melted. I'm going to push in on that. And we're going to uh, kill the Mage as well. 
pop in some chain lightnings. I get a little flashy, kill the mage with the chain lightning here. Put down the magma totem, get flame shock on everybody. More chain lightning. Uh, start spreading that flame shock on everybody, and we are going to push these guys back. Next up, we have some Arathi base in action, and this happens quick, so buckle up. We have a flame elemental out from the previous fight. Run in, searing totem. That's three flame shocks, four on the pally. Then we put out another one, five with primordial wave, five flame shocks. We're going to look for a one shot on this warrior right now, and here we go. Warrior is going to get absolutely smoked. And then we turn our attention to the warlock. Mini flame elemental comes down, and we shred him with chain lightning. That was from two chain lightning procs. Lightning Rod and the Baby Elemental did that to that Warlock. And now that the kill window's over, it's back to Spread Pressure and putting up Flame Shocks on everybody. You notice how I used that Searing Totem on just the Warrior? Flame Shock the Hunter, Primordial Wave the Warlock. The other Warlock already has a Flame Shock on him. And take a look at the damage profile on the bottom left. Even with all of that insanity, all those Lightning Bolts, all those Chain Lightnings, Flame Shock is still my top damage. And that's, uh, that means you're doing a good job multi-dotting. Next up, we have another clip that's going to show off the damage profile. Take a look at the bottom left. Flame Shock is by far most of my damage. And that's kind of what you want because that's going to let your teammates make plays. And it's just going to stress out the other enemy healers. And this is what you do while you wait for an opportunity, while you're waiting for your Maelstrom, waiting for your Tempest procs. And you notice I'm going to get one right about now. And it's go time. Moonkin is going to get absolutely shredded. We're going to push in on that. I'm going to get a nice little wind shear on this Priest heal. Blow him up. Then we're going to turn our attention to the Warlock. Baby Elemental comes down with the, the glorious fireball. Totem. Boom. Glorious kill on the Warlock. Very cinematic. And this final clip is going to show off another team fight where you just sort of turn your guns on some random unsuspecting person. So we're going to start doing our normal flame shock everybody routine. Get them rolling and wait for an opportunity. We got our Maelstrom relatively high. So we're in a position where if an opportunity does present itself, we're ready. And what do you know? A fucking Mistweaver rolls in and he's going to get that dick. Absolutely destroyed him. Now we're back to... Flame Shock City time. We still have a little bit of our instant cast damage. We're going to turn our guns to this mage here and dump a few chain lightnings in him. And watch the chain lightnings hit all of the trash mobs. And that's going to force him to duck around line of sight. But he has lightning rod on him. So we're going to attack somebody else and kill him behind line of sight with the lightning rod damage. How cinematic of a way to kill somebody. Fantastic. Anyway... Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any suggestions or, or ways to improve this, let me know in the comments below. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe with notifications on. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and join the Discord. It's free.